Hello everyone, welcome back to Secret Things. Today, we're going to explore the future of farming, that is vertical farming. Did you know that the global market size of vertical farming amounted to $3.9 billion in 2021? As the world's population grows, the demand for fresh produce is increasing, and traditional farming methods simply won't be enough to meet it. That's where vertical farming comes in. Vertical farming is a game changer in the world of agriculture, offering a sustainable and innovative solution to food production. But is it really the future for agriculture? Some argue that it won't replace traditional farming, while others believe it's the key to feeding our growing population. In this video, we'll explore the technology behind vertical farming, the benefits and drawbacks of this innovative method, and the other facts that'll make you more knowledgeable about it. Get ready to discover the future of farming. Welcome to our video on vertical farming. What exactly is vertical farming? The purpose of a skyscraper is to provide more space for workers or residents, maximizing city space. Vertical farming serves the same purpose. Vertical farming is the practice of growing crops by stacking them on top of each other. This results in significantly less land being used than in traditional farming and the implementation of soilless farming. Some vertical farming businesses are even distinguishing themselves by developing soil-based vertical farms. When did vertical farms first appear? The Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which are also considered a pioneer of hydroponic farming, are the earliest known form of vertical farming. However, the term vertical farming was first used by an author named Gilbert Ellis Bailey in 1950. Vertical farming was first used in Armenia in 1951, according to a New York City-based American daily newspaper. After considering the negative effects of agriculture, a professor named Dr. Dixon Despomir along with 105 students developed vertical farming in 1999. However, the first commercial vertical farm opened in Singapore in October 2012 with Sky Greens Farms. Sky Greens Farms debuted with 120 aluminum towers 30 feet or 9.1 meters tall. That's the height of two female giraffes stacked on top of each other. What are some of the benefits of vertical farming? Vertical farming uses less water as well as less land. In terms of water, vertical farming recycles water and nutrients, resulting in zero waste. This farming method also reduces air pollution because it can be done in urban areas, eliminating the need for trucks to transport produce over long distances. Pesticides are also unnecessary in vertical farming because vertical farms are typically located indoors, which are pest-free and weatherproof environments. These two advantages of vertical farming result in cleaner air, fresher vegetables, and lower greenhouse gas emissions. But, of all of these benefits, the ability of vertical farming to be more efficient than traditional farming stands out the most. Why? It, in fact, plays a critical role in meeting the rising food demand caused by the world's population growth. What are the drawbacks to vertical farming? Lettuce for rich people, an American journalist said when discussing vertical farming. Vertical farming produce is more expensive than traditional farming produce, so it makes sense. Running a vertical farm is expensive because of the extra costs that you don't have with nature. One of these extra costs is artificial lighting, which is used to replace sunlight. Remember how I said that one advantage of vertical farms is that they are pesticide-free because they are done indoors. This advantage, however, creates a disadvantage because indoor farming makes pollination difficult due to a lack of pollinators such as bees. The solution would be to manually pollinate plants via hand pollination, which is time-consuming and labor-intensive. Vertical farming's progress is also hampered by the fact that not all crops are suitable for this method of farming. What is the best crop for vertical farming? Most vertical farming companies concentrate on growing leafy green vegetables such as basil, lettuce, and kale because they are in high demand and grow quickly. Furthermore, some crops such as rice, potatoes, and wheat require more land to grow. Vertical farms prioritize crops that require less space and time to grow because they are the most profitable to produce. This is not to say that companies aren't attempting to plant these difficult crops for vertical farming. Who are some celebrities who have invested in vertical farming? Celebrities such as Justin Timberlake, Natalie Portman, and Jeff Bezos have all invested in vertical farming businesses. Justin Timberlake and Natalie Portman put their money into Bowery, a vertical farming company based in New York City. 
Bowery Farms are managed using robotics and artificial intelligence, and it raised $300 million in its third round of funding in 2021. The Bowery claims that their numerous U.S.-based vertical farms can produce over 47 million servings of leafy greens per year. Plenty, which Jeff Bezos invested in in 2017, is another vertical farming company that uses robotics and AI to manage its vertical farms. The Amazon founder's investment contributed to the $200 million in funding raised by Plenty that year. If you're wondering why they and other vertical farming companies use robotics and artificial intelligence in their vertical farms, the answer is simple. Robotics and AI can manage vertical farms more efficiently than humans, as they're able to grow crops more accurately. Vertical farming is a cutting-edge agricultural technique that helps us conserve land, water, and air pollution. While it may solve many of the problems associated with traditional farming, it also has its own set of issues and drawbacks. However, in general, vertical farming is a type of agriculture that has the potential to change the way we farm and consume produce.